everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now today, I'd like to introduce all of you to the most famous caballero ever, the masked avenger of early California himself, Zorro. For those who may not be familiar with this mysterious horseman, here's a little backstory. Zorro was created in 1919 by American pulp writer Johnston McCulley. He's typically portrayed as a dashing mass vigilante who defends the commoners and indigenous peoples of California against corrupt and tyrannical officials and other villains. In the story, Zorro has a high bounty on his head, but is too skilled and cunning for the bumbling authorities to catch. And he also delights in publicly humiliating them. Because of this, the townspeople started calling him El Zorro due to his fox-like cunning and charm. Plus, Zorro is an acrobat and an expert in various weapons. But the one he employs most frequently is his rapier, which he uses often to carve the initial Z on his defeated foes and other objects to sign his work. Also, Zorro is an accomplished rider, his trusty steed being a black horse named Tornado. Also to note, Zorro is the secret identity of Don Diego de la Vega, a young man who is the only son of Don Alejandro de la Vega, the richest landowner in California. In most versions, Diego learned his swordsmanship while at the university in Spain and he created his masked alter ego after he was unexpectedly summoned home by his father because California had fallen into the hands of an oppressive dictator. In order to divert suspicion about his identity, Diego hides his fighting abilities while also pretending to be a coward and a fop. Now, during my childhood, while I never actually read Zorro's 1919 novel, The Curse of Capistrano, nor have I ever watched any of the old Zorro movies from before my generation, I was actually introduced to the character from, obviously enough, Disney's sing-along VHS series, where the Hi-Ho video featured the Zorro theme song from the 1950s TV series starring Guy Williams which I used to watch on the Disney Channel during the mid to late 1990s. And to me, this series was absolutely awesome and very thrilling. Plus, during one Halloween during my childhood, I got to dress up as Zorro when I was very young. By the way, you might find this very surprising, but if you look very closely and take away the Z from Zorro, you might find something very surprising. If you haven't figured it out, it's my last name, Oro. And that's not the only word that my last name is hidden in, believe me. Plus, I find it pretty interesting that Zorro has inspired the creation of several similar characters in pulp magazines and other media, such as Batman and Puss in Boots. Also to note, during the late 1990s, I managed to see a Zorro movie in theaters, which I think was the very first PG-13 movie that I ever saw at the time. And of course, it's the subject of my blog today. Released on July 17th, 1998, the movie is The Mask of Zorro. And now, on for the plot of the movie. After being in prison for 20 years, Don Diego de la Vega, aka Zorro, receives word that his old enemy, Don Rafael Montero, has returned. Don Diego escapes and returns to his old headquarters, where he trains aimless drunk Alejandro Mutiera to be his successor. Meanwhile, Montero, who has secretly raised Diego's daughter, Elena, as his own, hatches a plot to rob California of its gold. So, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, when I first saw the movie in theaters back when I was about seven years old, there were several things that were pretty serious 
and intense for me at the time, and I really didn't understand too much about it. But after watching it again for the first time in over 20 years, I think it's a very epic, action-packed, and awesome. In fact, way more awesome now than when I was little. And to further explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. In October 1992, TriStar Pictures and Steven Spielberg's Emblem Entertainment were planning to start production on Zorro the following year, and they hired Joel Groves to rewrite the script after they were impressed with his adaptation of The Three Musketeers. Groves completed his rewrite in March 1993, and TriStar entered pre-production, creating early promotion for the film that same month at the Show West trade show. By December 1993, Bronco Lustin was producing the movie with Spielberg, and Michael Solomon was attached as director. Pre-production proceeded even further in August when Solomon compiled test footage for a planned April 1995 start date. In September 1995, Robert Rodriguez, fresh off the success of Desperado, signed on to direct. But unfortunately, Rodriguez pulled out of the movie in June 1996 over difficulties coming to terms with TriStar on the budget. And later that month, Martin Campbell signed on, turning down the chance to direct Tomorrow Never Dies. The finished screenplay was written by Ted Elliott, Terry Rosio, and Randall Johnson. The principal photography began in January 1997 at East Studios Churubusco in Mexico City, Mexico. And after the movie was released, it became a critical and commercial success, grossing $250 million on a $95 million budget. And it was followed by a sequel called The Legend of Zorro, released in 2005. Now, like I said earlier, this movie was the very first PG-13 movie that I ever saw in theaters. And now that I'm older, it kind of feels strange that my parents would take a then seven-year-old little boy to a movie like this at the time. I mean, seeing Pirates of the Caribbean in theaters at the age of 12, about two months before turning 13, was pretty much an easier experience for me. Anyway... After recently watching the movie on Blu-ray, I realized how amazing this movie is. And in my opinion, the story set in 1840s California is pretty interesting. And I think the training scene is absolutely cool. And the fight scenes are absolutely awesome. With a few comical stunts here and there. Also to note, the musical score by the late James Horner is really excellent. However, the only thing I still do not understand too much with this movie is the politics, like when the movie talks about the American-Mexican War. Okay, I understand that California used to be part of Mexico, but whenever my history classes talked about the U.S. and Mexico, they would mostly mention Texas. But then again, I don't think history classes can go over everything related to American history. Anyway, I think that's all I got from Mustang Notes, so let's just move on to the cast. Let's start with our main character, Alejandro Morita, a.k.a. Zorro, played by the legendary Antonio Banderas. Best known from Evita, the first three Spy Kids movies, the second Spongebob Squarepants movie, as well as the Shrek sequels and spin-off, which will be getting its own sequel this December. Now, ever since my childhood, I thought Antonio Banderas' portrayal as Zorro was really fantastic due to his sword fighting skills, charming wit, and clever stunts. However, in the movie, before he became Don Diego's successor, Alejandro and his brother Joaquin were two young boys who looked up to Zorro. And I like that they helped him a little bit by dropping a statue 
onto Don Raphael's guards. 20 years later, as a young man, Alejandro and Joaquin become bandits, teaming up with Three-Finger Jack. But after Jack and Joaquin are killed by Captain Harrison Love, Alejandro makes it his goal to kill the man who murdered his brother. Some of my favorite scenes include the part where Alejandro tames his own black stallion and where he attends Raphael's party incognito. His mentor, Don Diego de la Vega, the original Zorro, is played by Anthony Hopkins, best known from not only the MCU Thor movies, but also Robert Zemeckis' Beowulf, and he narrated Ron Howard's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. In this movie, 20 years after getting arrested by Rafael Montero and losing his wife, daughter, and home, Don Diego escapes from prison and seeks a successor and makes Alejandro his protege. To me, Diego makes a great mentor character, kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars, Mickey from Rocky, and Hank Pym from the Ant-Man movies. Plus, I think his secret cave is absolutely breathtaking. Our next character is Don Diego's stolen daughter, Elena Montero, played by Catherine Zeta-Jones, who got to be in Chicago, Rock of Ages, and DreamWorks Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas. When her biological father was arrested and her mother was killed, Elena had been raised by Rafael Montero for about 20 years in Spain. To me, Elena is beautiful, tough, and independent, but also headstrong, while also living a lie throughout most of her life. And due to Rafael's strict parenting, Elena had never experienced non-platonic interaction with a man before. Plus, I think the dance that Elena shares with Alejandro is really sweet. And I like the part where Elena learns the truth when she meets the woman who used to be her nanny, who tells her of her parents' real identity. Another character to talk about is Capitan Harrison Love, the film's secondary antagonist, played by Matt Lesher, who was in Gods and Generals, and he played Reverse Flash in The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow TV shows. For those who don't know, Harry Love was the head of California's first statewide law enforcement agency, known as the California Rangers, whom were also considered to be part of California's early state militia the predecessor to the current California Army National Guard. In the movie, Love is a sadistic American U.S. Cavalry captain who serves as Don Rafael Montero's right-hand man and whom was responsible for killing Joaquin and Three-Fingered Jack. In my opinion, not only is Love sadistic, but he's also a ruthless and a sick man as he drank from pots in which the body parts of his killed enemies were kept in, like Joaquin's head, for example. Finally, we come to the movie's main villain, Don Rafael Montero, played by Stuart Wilson, who was in films like Hot Fuzz, Princess of Thieves, and the horrendous 2002 Dinotopia miniseries. Ugh, seriously. Why did my dad make me sit through that atrocity? Anyway, in the beginning of the movie, Montero was the corrupt Spanish governor of California who fancied Don Diego's wife, Esperanza. But when he uncovers De La Vega's identity as Zorro, Montero infiltrates his house and Esperanza is accidentally killed by one of Montero's soldiers. He then arrests De La Vega and takes his infant daughter, Elena, and raises her as his own. Which kind of makes me think of Judge Turpin from the Sweeney Todd stage musical. 20 years later, after returning from Spain, Montero plans to buy California from Santa Ana using gold mined from Santa Ana's own land, and he decides to destroy the mines 
and kill the workers in order to avoid retribution. And now on to my final words. Overall, The Mask of Zorro is an incredibly awesome movie. And nowadays, it's a very underrated movie. But I'm glad that I got to watch it again after 20 years. The cinematography is fantastic. The setting in 1840s California is interesting. The action is thrilling, epic, and comical. The main character Alejandro makes a great new Zorro, and Antonio Banderas does a magnificent performance as the masked Avenger. Don Diego makes a very memorable mentor character. Plus, I kind of like how this movie tries to connect with actual history by adding in people who actually existed at the time. And watching this movie again not only brings back memories from seeing it in theaters, but also childhood memories from the Disney Zorro TV series. However, my one nitpick with this movie is that it almost gets away with showing a naked woman on screen. But still, if you're into the thrilling adventures of the masked Avenger of early California, then by all means, give this movie a watch. I can assure you that you'll be in for quite a ride. And so, I give this movie the highest rating of 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where I look at a mid-1990s Disney movie which focuses on two bad boys from the world of Mark Twain. Mustang Power. <laughs>